Harry was frying eggs by the time Dudley arrived in the kitchen with his mother. Dudley looked a lot like Uncle Vernon. He had a large pink face, not much neck, small watery blue eyes, and thick blonde hair that lay smoothly on his thick, fat head. Aunt Petunia often said that Dudley looked like a baby angel. Harry often said that Dudley looked like a pig in a wig. Harry put the plate of eggs and bacon on the table, which was difficult as there wasn't much room. Dudley, meanwhile, was counting his presents. His face fell. Thirty-six, he said, looking up at his mother and father. That's two less than last year. Darling, you haven't counted Auntie Marge's present, see? It's here under this big one from Mummy and Daddy. All right, thirty-seven then, said Dudley, going red in the face. Dud Harry, who could see a huge Dudley tantrum coming on, began wolfing down his bacon as fast as possible in case Dudley turned the table over. Aunt Petunia obviously sent scented danger too because she said quickly and we'll buy you another two presents while we're out today how's that popkin two more presents is that all right dudley thought for a moment it looked like hard work finally he said slowly so i'll have thirty 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 nine sweetums said aunt petunia oh Dudley sat down heavily and grabbed the nearest parcel. All right, then. Uncle Vernon chuckled. Little Tyke wants his money's worth, just like his father. Atta boy, Dudley. He ruffled Dudley's hair. At that moment, the telephone rang and Aunt Petunia went to answer it while Harry and Uncle Vernon watched Dudley unwrap the racing bike, a cine camera, a remote-controlled aeroplane, 16 new computer games, and a video recorder. He was ripping the paper off a gold wristwatch when Aunt Petunia came back from the telephone, looking both angry and worried. Bad news, Vernon, she said. Miss Fig's broken her leg. She can't take him. She jerked her head in Harry's direction. Dudley's mouth fell open in horror, but Harry's heart gave a leap. Every year on Dudley's birthday, his parents took him and a friend out for the day to adventure parks, hamburger bars, and, or the cinema. Every year, Harry was left behind with Mrs. Fig, a mad old lady who lived two streets away. Harry hated it there. The whole house smelled of cabbage, and Miss Fig made him look at photographs of all the cats she'd ever owned. Now what? said Aunt Petunia, looking furiously at Harry, as though he'd planned this. Harry knew he ought to feel sorry that Mrs. Fig had broken her leg, but it wasn't easy when he reminded himself it would be a whole year before he had to look at Tibbles, Snowy, Mr. Paws, and Tufty again. We could phone Marge, Uncle Vernon suggested. Don't be silly, Vernon. She hates the boy. The Dursleys often spoke about Harry like this, as though he wasn't there, or rather, as though he was something very nasty that couldn't understand them like a slug. What about what's her name, your friend Yvonne? On holiday in Majorca, snapped Aunt Petunia. You could just leave me here, Harry put in hopefully. He'd be able to watch what he wanted on television for a change and maybe even have a go on Dudley's computer. Aunt Petunia looked as though she just swallowed a lemon. And come back and find the house in ruins, she snarled. I won't blow up the house, said Harry, but they weren't listening. I suppose we could take him to the zoo, said Aunt Petunia slowly, and leave him in the car. That car is new. He's not sitting in it alone. Dudley began to cry loudly. In fact, he wasn't really crying. It had been years since he'd really cried. But he knew that if he screwed up his face and wailed, his mother would give him anything he wanted. Dinky diddums, don't cry. Mummy won't let him spoil your special day, she cried, flinging her arms around him. I don't want 
him t t to come. Dudley yelled between huge pretend sobs. He always sp spoils everything. He shot Harry a nasty grin through the gap in his mother's arms. Just then the doorbell rang. Oh, good Lord, they're here, said Aunt Petunia frantically. And a moment later, Dudley's best friend, Pierre's Polkis, walked in with his mother. Pierre's was a scrawny boy with a face like a rat. He was usually the one who held people's arms behind their backs while Dudley hit them. Dudley stopped pretending to cry at once. Half an hour later, Harry, who couldn't believe his luck, was sitting in the back of the Dursley's car with Pierre's and Dudley on the way to the zoo for the first time in his life. His aunt and uncle hadn't been able to think of anyone else, anything else to do with him. But before they'd left, Uncle Vernon had taken Harry aside. I'm warning you, he had said, putting his large purple face right up close to Harry's. I'm warning you now, boy. Any funny business, anything at all, and you'll be in that cupboard from now until Christmas. I'm not going to do anything, said Harry, honestly. But Uncle Vernon didn't believe him. No one ever did. The problem was strange things often happened around Harry, and it was just no good telling the Dursleys he didn't make them happen. Once, Aunt Petunia, tired of Harry, coming back from the barbers looking as though he hadn't been at, been at all, she'd taken a pair of kitchen scissors and cut his hair short, so short he was almost bald except for his fringe which she left to hide that horrible scar. Dudley had laughed himself silly at Harry, who spent a sleepless night imagining school the next day, where he was already laughed at for his baggy clothes and cellotape glasses. Next morning, however, he had got up to find his hair exactly as it had been before Aunt Petunia had sheared it off. He had been given a week in his cupboard for this, even though he had tried to explain that he couldn't explain how it had grown back so quickly. Another time, Aunt Petunia had been trying to force him into a revolting old jumper of Dudley's, brown with orange bobbles. The harder she tried to pull it over his head, the smaller it seemed to become, until finally it might have fitted a glove puppet, but certainly wouldn't fit Harry. Aunt Petunia had decided it must have shrunk in the wash, and, to his great relief, Harry wasn't punished. On the other hand, he'd got into terrible trouble for being found on the roof of the school kitchens. Dudley's gang had been chasing him as usual when, as much to Harry's surprise as anyone else's, there he was sitting on the chimney. The Dursleys had received a very angry, angry letter from Harry's headmistress telling them Harry had been climbing school buildings, but all he tried to do as he shouted at Uncle Vernon through the locked door of his cupboard, was jump behind the big bins outside the kitchen doors. Harry supposed that the wind must have caught him in mid-jump. But today, nothing was going to go wrong. It was even worth being with Dudley and Pierre's to be spending the day somewhere that wasn't school, his cupboard or Mrs. Fig's cabbage-smelling living room. While he drove, Uncle Vernon complained to Aunt Petunia. He liked to complain about things. People at work, Harry, the council, Harry, the bank, and Harry were just a few of his favorite subjects. This morning, it was motorbikes. Roaring along like maniacs, the young hoodlums, he said, as a motorbike overtook them. I had a dream about a motorbike, said Harry, remembering suddenly. It was flying. Uncle Vernon nearly crashed into the car in front. He turned right around in his seat and yelled at Harry, his face like a gigantic beetroot with a mustache. Motorbikes don't fly! Dudley and Pierre sniggered. I know they don't, said Harry. It was only a dream. But he wished he hadn't said anything. If there was one thing the Dursleys hated even more than his asking questions, it was his talking about anything acting in a way it shouldn't, no matter if it was in a dream or even a cartoon. They seemed to think he might get dangerous ideas. 
It was a very sunny Saturday, and the zoo was crowded with families. The Dursleys brought Dudley and Pierre's large chocolate ice creams at the entrance. And then, because the smiling lady in the van had asked Harry what he wanted before they could hurry him away, they bought him a cheap lemon ice lolly. It wasn't bad either, Harry thought, licking it as they watched a gorilla scratching its head and looking remarkably like Dudley, except that it wasn't blonde. Harry had the best morning he had in a long time. He was careful to walk a little way apart from the Dursley so that Dudley and Pierre, who were starting to get bored with the animals at lunchtime, wouldn't fall back on their favorite hobby of hitting him.